My name is Brian and welcome back to Desert Theory. Well, we finally made it to a race weekend. Well, today's gonna be a busy day. We start off with qualifying first thing in the morning, then we're gonna have a jackpot run around noon, and then we're gonna take all the cars in the town for contingency and kind of a, a little mini parade, it sounds like. So uh, we're gonna get going here, but we are excited. Okay, so right now we just have the team checking all the air pressures in both of our spare tires and in the tires on the race car. So. Um, need to make sure we're all at 28 pounds all the way around on this car and we're just doing that here before the race starts. So as you can see pits are getting a little bit busier. And it's going to be uh, definitely UTV heavy field. So uh, UTVs are going to dominate uh, here today in car numbers, it looks like. We have some trucks, we have some class 10 buggies. But it's class 10s like a limited motor, um, or ours is an unlimited motor, but the suspension's all unlimited. So got a bunch of different classes. All right, guys, well, this is a little crazy. We're, uh, we're qualifying in a car we haven't really raced. So uh, we have a three mile lap. It is going to be as fast as you can go and then that'll determine what the start position is. So, got some butterflies, a little bit nervous. Uh, definitely would feel better if this was our second or third race and we were qualifying. So, in all the desert racing we've done, we've actually never qualified. So, a uh, bunch of new experiences this time, and it's, it's pretty exciting, so. Cars ready. We have about 20 minutes here um, until everybody's gonna line up, and then we're gonna do kind of a, a I forget what they call it. Basically, just get the drive around at 30 miles an hour, a visual lap on it. We all get to see what it is, and then we'll come back, park, and then they'll qualify. Um, we're starting at the rear of the pack because qualifying position was determined off of the last race finishing order. So we didn't race it, so we're gonna be the back of the pack. So uh, that'll give some time to get some berms worked in. Um, probably be a little bit better for us, I think, even than being the first car off the line. So. We're not worried about that at all. What do you think, Kelly? It looks like you're getting a little nervous. No, I'm not nervous at all. I mean, maybe a little. No, I think we're, yeah, we're super excited about doing this. And uh, I'm glad Brian's driving. He's, he's, uh, it's, it's usually a little more calming just to be the co-driver and just kind of help him out. So I'm, I got no, no, uh, well, I guess it's probably half of what I normally end up having. For, he's got a different look on his face. He's definitely, you can tell he's a little more calm down. A little more calm down, but still, he's not normal. No. He's definitely not a normal calm.
got done with qualifying and I didn't do very good. I was kind of all over the course, um, just that little different race speed and being a little bit looser than where we drove it before, I just wasn't that smooth. So I'm sure that there's gonna be a lot of people qualify in front of us and uh, that's just the way it is. But uh, it was cool, we had a blast, not super excited. I, I'm guessing that's gonna actually qualify somewhere down in the, the lower half of the qualifying. So not a, not a good turnout for the qualifying run, but it's our first time ever racing the car. So I'm not uh, too disappointed in myself. Uh, we kept it straight, didn't break anything. So I'll be happy with that. All right, so what we're doing right now is we are just cruising up the different areas on the course and we're trying to figure out where we're gonna put people, where we're gonna put spare tires and uh, just kind of doing that for right now. Uh-huh. What Does else this you truck have the same suspension as a race car, Brian? The F-350 does not have the same speed capabilities in the desert as the, as the race well, car. Well, we really haven't given it a full effort. <laughs> we should try that. We are not going to give it a full effort. We're going to have half the rest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who's, come on. You got to give a little oh, bit of speed here, right? Can we take it right here, Kel? Yeah. So this helps for multiple reasons, knowing where the access points to the different race mile markers are. So um, we can get tires up here like we were talking about a second ago, or if during the race we break down somewhere, now our whole pit crew knows how to get the race mile for. So we'll try and do this throughout uh, the rest of the day here, try and find a bunch of different spots where we can access the course at uh, different race miles. Okay, so we just finished up our uh, pre-run lap in the Baja. And man, the course is, it's a uh, pretty tight technical. There's not gonna be a lot of fourth gear. It's gonna be a lot of first and second. A lot of uphill, washy sections. Gonna be a great race course. We are really excited for how well this can do. Um, but right now, we have to, to quit talking about that and we gotta get these cars into contingency. Contingency is where we're gonna check all of our fire suit safety gear and we're gonna go run them in. So um, we got trucks, we got a ladies into town with trucks and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so we're just on our way back to town. We're gonna do a, a little cruising down the road. We've got my brother Dan here with me and uh, we're heading into contingencies. So this is just kind of the meet and greet with all the kids from the Boys and Girls Club in Urington, Nevada here. Hey, you just kind of have to stay on your tippy toes on that one. Okay, so we're just here at Contingency and Russ is going through our helmets and our fire suits and he's looking to make sure that they're legal for the year. So 
just like the seat belts, the helmets will have a, a, a rating on them and also a date on when they were manufactured and they're only good for a certain amount of time after that. So Russ, you're looking for like a lot of uh, safety stuff, but when you're going around the car, you're looking for general condition of the well, car too? Well, you probably don't see it, but like I walk out to your car, the first thing I do, people think I'm just running into their car, but I'm usually just checking your wheel bearings and all your rod ends and all that stuff, but sure, it's right. usually just a bump and I can usually see what's going on. Yeah, so brake lines and stuff, so safe, mostly safety, 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 safety. I'll walk, I'll walk up, look at your glove, do you have a glove on the Wait, and I've seen cars come through with missing two lug nuts, you know? Okay. And it's always a good joke at the end. Yeah. You know, you get all done and you're like, okay, you passed, but you're missing one lug nut in the back and they freak out, dude. They're like, what? You know, so. How'd it go, Bri? We're good, we passed. <laughs> Okay, so we're here at Pro Pit with Dennis, and Dennis has been around off-roading, off-road racing forever. Dennis was a off-road race promoter. He was an off-road uh, race car builder. He is a racer, and now he's running Pro Pit. And Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about what Pro Pit would do for a racer? So I think the best thing to do right here, while we're uh, talking about our services, uh, here at Vora, as part of their entry fee, anybody and everybody can have access to the people that we have and to the equipment that we have. We run a remote pit out in the out in the middle of the desert for them. And so kind of what we do, show you a little bit about the equipment that's in there. There's devices, fire extinguishers, uh, light to light up the evening sky, a welder right there, power tools there, tire machine if you need a tire fix, press. Uh, nuts and bolts all over the place. There's bends of nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts. Uh, fixed wiring issues. Uh, on the outside of the trailer here. We have a, a tool band that we have for the racers. For us to be able to work on their car if they need it. And then here where we keep all of the fluids that get bounced around when you drive down the highway. So we have gear oil, engine oil, transmission fluid, brake fluid, grease for CV joints, uh, stuff like that. And on this side up here, we have to spend any time with us. We have a kitchen in here and you'll have an awesome dinner, lunch, breakfast, whatever. We pull it with this Kenworth tractor right here. Uh, Kind of a special one for us because it carries 200 gallons of fuel. It's got e-lockers, locking differentials to get us in and out of the desert. We have a, an FM uh, antenna that goes up about 30 feet in the air with rugged radio to communicate with. And uh, we've been doing this for better than 20 years. So what Dennis can really offer out there is not only um, if you don't have a lot of pit support, he can be your dump your fuel, he can change your tires. Um, if you do have a bunch of fuel sport, he's just another spot out on the course that can actually get, get you help. Really cool that you do this, Dennis. Just wanted to thank you for doing this and supporting uh, off-road racing and, and spending all your time out here doing this. I love it, guys. It's the best thing on earth. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.